Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be having a party. Between two and nine of us are going to be having a party. It's more specifically a brick party. Now it's not the bricks that you think on the side of the wall. We're actually looking at little Lego pieces here. Uh, now today we're going to be doing a rule school. So essentially I'm going to first give you a one minute overview of how the game works. And then I'm going to teach you how to set the game up and play it rule for rule without having to read the rule book. Well, without further ado, let's get going. Brick Party is a simultaneous team game where one of you will be an architect and you'll be trying to secretly get your partner, who's the builder, to take these blocks and build what's on your card. Then each round you'll be following a specific rule. In this case, you have to use at least one block of every color. The architect with the secret card will be telling the builder how to do it without touching the blocks and the builder will be trying to do it without seeing the cards all along trying to f follow any of the rules that are in the game. Hopefully by the end you'll be able to finish it, start a sand timer, and rush everybody else to try to finish it as well, and you'll gain points depending on if you did it correctly or not. It plays two to nine players in roughly 15 to 30 minutes, and also has a variant for if you're playing with four or less players or with younger children. In setup, the first thing you'll do is lay out all the blocks in the middle of the table so everybody can reach them, as well as the timer. Next, you'll separate out the different types of cards. These are called the rule cards. You will shuffle those and place them face down. The rest of these bluish cards, they have this on one side of them. You'll take all the cards that are there and you'll put them, flip them over face up and you'll put them in three piles, ones, twos, and threes. Next, you'll find all of what's called the shape cards, which have this on the back of them. You're gonna take all those cards and separate them out so that they're all in four different piles. This is all number fives, all number sixes, sevens, and eights. Once you have these set up into those four different stacks, you'll take each of these stacks, you'll shuffle it up, and you'll pass each player two of the cards from each stack. That means that each player is going to have two fives, two sixes, two sevens, and two eights for a total of eight cards, and afterwards you will place them in the four face-up piles like this on the table. This is played simultaneously throughout different rounds. Each round has seven different phases. At the beginning of the game, you will create a leader. That leader is the youngest player. That leader in phase one is called draw a rule card. You will take this top rule card and you will place it face up so that everybody can see it. In this case, this rule just says that everybody has to use at least one color block from each of the different colors. The next phase is called form teams. Now let's say we have four players. Each player has two of these cards. Normally these would be in front of you and further away from each other, but for the video I'm showing that there's four players here. Let's say this player is the leader. This player would pick their partner for the round. They pick one person. Let's say this player picks this person, their teams. The next one clockwise would then pick somebody else who's not chosen. In this case, it would just be this player. If there's more players in this, you keep going clockwise. Each person that has not yet uh, chosen a partner or has a partner will choose someone that hasn't been chosen yet until everyone has a partner. Now, if you're playing with an odd amount of players, let's say there's three, and this was the leader. The leader does not play this round. This player is now partners with this player. If there were more players and still odd, this player would then choose their teammates and you would continue to do it the same way, but the leader does not choose. Once the teams have been formed, the timer gets flipped over and both teammates have to decide who is gonna be the architect, meaning the one telling somebody how to build, and who's gonna be the builder, the one actually doing the building. Now, if they don't decide before this timer goes up, then the player closest clockwise to the leader will become the architect. Now, once it's been decided, these cards are in everybody's hands, essentially, but the architect is going to choose which card they're going to use. At the beginning of the game, remember, you started with two of everyone. These would be in your hands secretly. Nobody else would be able to see these cards, but I have them down on the table just so you could see them. They would select one of these cards, and the rest of them they would put face down. Let's say they selected this one. These would be in a face down deck, and they would not show this card to anyone, even including their builder. They cannot see this card yet. This is a secret. Now, after you've assigned roles, once this timer empties, the leader will yell, go. 
At that point in time, the architects are gonna instruct to their builders using words how to build this. They can say anything they want, but they cannot say what the value is of the card. And of course they can't show them this card either. Also keeping in mind that everyone is using the rule card that was drawn at the beginning of the round. And in this case, again, is one block of each color has to be used. And so they're trying to get them to instruct them how to do this. And everyone is doing it simultaneously. And again, since this is in the middle of the table, everyone's gonna be grabbing this at once, all the architects. And the builders are gonna be shouting commands. And again, this is a secret card. No one else can see it, but the architect of this team. So say, hey, uh, Mr. Builder, grab a one that's too large. So they'll be going over here and say, okay, I'll grab this one and put it here. And then this person, knowing that they have to do all the colors as well from the rule, might say, hey, grab a red uh, diagonal piece. So they might grab this one. They say, you know, flip it over and put it on the right side. So they'll put it right here. And they'll say, no, that's too small. You know what? Grab the ramp looking diagonal one that's three long and stack it on the, on the right side of the block. So as you can see, they're starting to sort of build this thing. Of course, they're working together and they're not showing them this card. And this will continue. So you might say, hey, grab another two, maybe a blue one, and put it on top of the ramp that you just did closest to the yellow edge. So maybe they do something like this. And then they say, hey, you know what? Let's... Uh, Let's grab another, grab a green ramp um, that is three long and put it so it goes down. It's on the blue and that it goes down towards the red one. And so they'll be building this as well. Now, over the course of this round, there's two major rules. The architect, the one telling them how to build with the secret card, can never touch any of the blocks. They can, they can motion towards them. They can yell colors. They can tell them what to do. They can tell them left, right. They can pretty much say every, anything they want. They just can't touch the blocks. Where the people who's building can never look at the car. Those are the two main rules. At some point, someone's gonna think, one of the architects is going to think that they have their partner, the builder has completed it. And at that point, they will then flip over the sand timer. This starts the completing a structure phase, and basically they have 30 seconds left to finish. Once the same timer has finished, we go to the check structures uh, phase, where the uh, architect will place this down so the builder can finally see it, and the builder will line this up on the card to see if they actually did it complete. In this case, they did. If we had not done a complete, we would get zero points. Uh, if we did do it complete, and we followed the rule for the round, which was one block of at least one block of each color, we would then get to score. Now, if this team did not do it correctly, they would simply just discard this card to show they got zero points. However, if they did it correctly, a few things happened. The architect would get to keep this card in front of them. This is the five points they got for this turn. The builder, who is their partner, would also take one of the five cards off the top of the deck that, that was set up at the beginning of the game and put that in front of them as well because they got five points as well. If they were the first ones done, the ones that flipped the timer, they also will get the points uh, denoted by on this card. They would keep this card as well, and their partner would grab a corresponding scorecard that is this that we set up at the beginning of the game as well. Now, if the people who finished first did not do it correctly, the scorecard for that round, the, the rules scorecard, uh, is discarded. And after finished scoring, you will place all the face-up scoring cards you have in one big pile from this round and any previous rounds, so you can only see the top card of your score. After this, the end of round phase happens and whoever it was the current leader of the round passes this timer clockwise one person to the new leader and we start a new round the same way. Now keep in mind that the shape cards that you drew at the beginning of the game never get replaced and so you never draw any more so you have to carefully choose which ones you are choosing each round. Once all the players have been a leader once, that ends the game, you add up your points and whoever has the most is the winner. Now I'm going to go over what all the different rule cards do as they come up. Remember there's one per round. This was the first one I showed you last time, which was you have to use at least one block of every color. This one it says you cannot use all the colors. You have to make sure you at least leave one color of blocks out. And this one, the builders have to use their offhand, meaning if you're a righty, you must do it lefty only. And if you're a lefty, you must do it righty only. In this one, the builders must keep the index and middle finger of each hand crossed. In this one, the builders must keep their eyes closed. In this one, the architects cannot speak, but they can mime and indicate blocks. In this one, the architects must sit with their backs towards the builders so that they can't see what they are building. In this one, the builders cannot use their thumbs. In this one, not the architect, but the builder holds the card 
facing the architect. The builder cannot look at it, but they're holding it towards the architect and they have to hold it upside down. Now the builder itself can use both hands to build if they can keep this card in the hand and upside down as they do so. And in the last one, the uh, architect can only say yes or no. They cannot mime or indicate block and the builders can speak and ask anything they want except for the value of the card. Now there's actually an additional rule card that comes with the game that is blank. You can use this to write any rule you want and a value, but when you place it in, take out a corresponding value card that you have put that in to replace. Now there is a variant to play this game called Brick Party Sprint. This is made for younger players or when you're playing with two to four players, you can use this variant. Each player will take all the blocks of one color. You'll also take all 10 of the scoring cards, you'll shuffle them together, and you'll begin by flipping one of them over. You'll also take three of each of the different shape card scores. So we have one for five, six, seven, and eight. You take three of those from each, you will shuffle those up, and you will place them like so in one big pile face down. And then the round starts by flipping this over and everybody has to try to complete this with their own blocks. As soon as the first person thinks they're done, they will start the sand timer. Once this sand timer ends, everybody compares to see if they have gotten it correctly. If so, they will take an unused card with the same score amount as the actual shape for that round in front of them. The one who did it first, if they did it correctly, would also get this as a bonus. If the player who finished first and flipped the sand timer did not do it correctly, this card would be discarded. To set up a new round, simply flip over the next card of the score card and the shape card and start again. This will continue until all 10 of these scorecards are gone, which means you'll play 10 rounds. Since there's 12 of these cards, there'll be two left over that you don't play with by the end of the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner. And just to remind you, in this version of the game, you do not use any of the rule cards. Well, I hope that helped you dive right in, get set up, and learn how to play the game without opening the rule book. Now, if you have some questions about the rules, you can go ahead and leave them as comments to this video, and I'll do the best I can at trying to answer them. Until next time, it's the Game Boy Geek. I'll see you around.